Hey, my name's Nat. Welcome to Newsbreak. New York City in the US, known as the city that never sleeps. But now it could be known as the city that is sinking. Here's Josh to explain. One. Oh, that was great. Now try lifting 764 billion kilograms. Wait, what? Because that is an average day at the gym for New York City. And a new study says that all that weight combined with rising sea levels is actually causing the city to sink. Yeah, it turns out one million buildings and eight million people are pretty heavy. We have different kinds of soils across New York City, including artificial fill that can sink just under its own weight because it's so poorly consolidated. Now, before you hit the panic button, it's only sinking at a rate of two millimetres every year. Yeah, it really isn't that much, is it? But experts say with certain areas of the city being only one to two metres above sea level, within the next couple of decades, the streets could be flooded. It's inevitable the ground's going down, the water's coming up. At some point, those two levels will meet, but I just am not able to give you a date. We've seen this kind of thing happen in some other cities around the world already, with places like Venice in Italy and Jakarta in Indonesia, which is sinking up to 17 centimetres every year. So researchers are hoping that the data will catch the attention of higher-ups in America, so they can try to slow things down a bit. Let all that sink in. Do you see what I did there? The Miami Heat are through to the NBA Finals. After a tough series against the Boston Celtics, it all came down to a deciding Game 7, where the Heat came out on top 103-84. to This was unexpected. Hardly anyone predicted they'd get this far. The Heat barely scraped into the playoffs in the first place. They'll now take on the Denver Nuggets for a shot at the NBA Championship. Oh. Now in breaking news... Uh, no, sorry, uh, break dancing news. Oh. Aussie breakers are prepping themselves for next year's Olympics after the sport was added to the games for the first time. But they're facing a few hurdles. Here's Thomas. These Aussie break dancers have their sights set on Paris 2024. I think the Olympics is a really great step in recognising breaking as a professional sport art. <laughs> I think many people just think it's like doing the robot or the worm at a party and anyone can be a breaker. The sport will be making its debut at the Games next year. But for these breakers, the road is looking pretty rocky. You see, to be able to qualify for the Olympics, they need to hold a qualifying event for the Oceania region. But that'll cost about $200,000 and they've got no funding to make it happen. And if we don't have a qualifier, there's a good chance that no one from this region will represent at the Paris Olympics. They say they'd be devastated to miss out on such a massive opportunity and want Australia to show breakdancing the same respect, recognition and funding that other sports get. It would be great if we got some more support from the Australian Olympic Committee and from a whole range of sporting institutions and, and businesses. So hopefully these breakers will catch a break soon. Ooh. Ooh. Now it's time for some stories that are all causing a stir. First up to these pesky cockatoos in New South Wales who have been prompting the residents of Campbelltown to lock their bins. Yep, these bin locks have been installed as part of a 12-month anti-bin raiding program. But bird experts aren't convinced they'll work, saying the cockatoos will eventually be able to outsmart them too. Now to Hawaii, where a local waterman wants to build a new wave pool, kind of like this one, using the latest technology to simulate the perfect wave. It's all to help local competitive surfers stay at the top of their game, but not everybody thinks it's a good idea. Why do we need wave pools on an island surrounded by the ocean? Some locals are worried that the pool is an unnecessary use of fresh water, while others say it'll really help surfers get a leg up on international competitors. When you're a surfer and you want to surf and there's no waves, you're kind of stuck. And finally, to the Cannes Film Festival and the moment Jane Fonda clocked French film director Justine Triette over the head with her award. Justine appeared to forget her certificate on the podium after delivering her acceptance speech. People were quick to repost the moment online, with many finding it pretty funny. Well, that's all we've got time for today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs>